All right, welcome back everybody. My name's Austin. We are now just a few days away from the 2020 presidential election of the United States of America. And as such, as an investor, whether you invest in the stock market, whether you invest in Bitcoin, let's talk about what this means for you. Now, I am not a certified financial advisor. This is not investment advice. And I realize that this market for this election is already very, very different than markets of the past. But let me share with you some historical data of stock market performance following presidential cycles. And we'll break it down as specific as what has happened to the markets historically when a Democrat has won, when a Republican has won, when the incumbent wins again, so in this case Trump, or we get a new president and the incumbent loses. The data should give us a clearer picture so we can make the best decision possible. Hit subscribe. You do not want to miss a daily video and let's jump in. Before we get to the market post-election, let's talk about the market pre-election. Here's how much the stock market usually rallies in the eight calendar days before a presidential election. And if we're just looking at the data, oh, it rallies. The S&P 500, on average, rises 89% of the time in the eight days before an election since 1944. Here is the exact data. The S&P, since 1944, Right, except for one, two, three days, anywhere from what, one to 3%, except for one year. So let's zoom out and break down exactly what this is telling us. Highlighted in the chart above, the S&P 500 has risen an average of about 2.5% in the final eight calendar days before the election. Moreover, since 1944, the index is up 17 out of 19 times or 89%. So historically, we can glean that Democrat, Republican does not matter. Historically, the week before the election, people are excited. Markets are up. Hmm, it's interesting though, we're down 2.87% today. How have we been the past week? If we look at the S&P just for the last five days, stagnant slash decline, maybe suggesting that this time, this market, this election is a little different. I don't know. Hey, we'll save our conclusions till we have all the information at the end of the video. If we look at Bitcoin, the price performance for the last week, we're stagnant slash up. Interesting. Let's keep going. What happened during the election years where we saw this huge uptick and then the few declines? Well, first, the uptick. The biggest rise by far came in the midst of the financial crisis with the S&P 500 roaring back 18.5% in a bear market rally ahead of Barack Obama's victory over John McCain. And then the market subsequently slumped back to new lows, bottoming four months later before beginning what would become the, the longest bull market in history. So this outlier was a bear market rally in the midst of a financial crisis. And if you're asking, okay, what were the two slumps? The two declines came in 1988, ahead of George H.W. Bush's victory over a Democratic nominee, Michael Dukakis, and a 1968 victory ahead of Richard Nixon's victory over Democratic nominee, Hubert Humphrey. So both slumps came ahead of a changing of the guard. So what is the takeaway? I would say it's an interesting metric. For me, eight days before an election, it's too small of a time frame. But the takeaway is, the market usually wants to rally. Ahead of an election, the market usually wants to rally. Keep that in mind, let's keep going. Let's look at what the market does after an election, depending on the outcome of an election. And very important to keep in mind that my analysis today, it's gonna to be apolitical, right? It's, we're just looking at the data. If you have an opinion, whether you're American or not, let's take a little straw poll, a vote in the comments. Is Joe your guy or is Donald? your guy. Keep it civil, keep it respectful, but there is a vote going on right now in the comments section. So let's look at the data. This is how all stock markets performed after an election, taking uh, all the elections since 1945. So we're going to start with all presidential elections, meaning we're not going to break it up yet, depending on if a Democrat or Republican run won, if it was an incumbent win or loss, just what happened to the stock market after a presidential election. Well, the average return in an election year, over 7%. The year after an election year, stock market's usually up 6%. Two years, 3%. 
three years after an election, no matter who's in charge, the market is usually up at its greatest amount, usually about 16.96%. And after four years, up about 7%. So the takeaway is, putting all that into account, the frequency of a positive return in the stock market in election year is 88.24%, meaning the stock market usually likes to go up. It was just last Friday that the Wall Street Journal similarly published a headline saying stocks typically climb regardless of who's in the White House. And some of you probably know this. The purchasing power of your dollar, fiat money, will typically go down. A can of Coke in the 1950s was five cents. Now it's two dollars. That can of Coke didn't become 20 times more valuable. That dollar lost its purchasing power because the Fed continues to print money. This incentivizes you to put money in other things like gold, Bitcoin, the stock market. And because of things like this, stocks typically climb. So that's the easy answer, but let's get more specific, right? That's why you subscribe to this channel for more perspective, to get more specific. Let's break down the historical market response if it's been a Democratic presidential win, a Republican win, if the incumbent has won, again, in this case, Trump, he's returning, he's the incumbent, or if the incumbent loses and we get a new president, in this case, Biden. So typically, the year a Democrat wins, stock market usually finishes up 3%. The year a Republican wins, the stock market usually finishes up 9%. And if we get an incumbent win, the same person returning, damn, the stock market at the end of an election year goes crazy. And that makes sense. That's sort of the common mindset we hear about. The markets like consistency. So at least for that first initial year, they would like an incumbent win. And historically, they say Republicans are better for business, while maybe Democrats are better for the environment and social issues. Again, these are all narratives that we've all heard. Keep the comments civil. Understand this is all just generic bias. Of course, Trump has, he is progressive on some social issues, and Biden has surrounded himself with big bankers, big corporations, so they don't specifically fit into the general bias. So anyway, that's the first year. What about looking farther out? What's the market response one, two, three, and four years out? Well, for a Democrat, damn, the market rallies in the second year. For a Republican, pretty stagnant, almost sort of a trade-off. From, your, from the election year to the first year. And then incumbent, damn, still does well that first year. And loss, all right, pretty stagnant. If we look at the second year, everything pretty much the same. Still the incumbent usually does the best that second year. Average return the third year. I mean, this is just everybody's best year. Again, not that much different. The stock market usually goes up. And that final year leading up to the next election, the Democratic, a Democrat as president, usually has the best year. So based on history, what combination situation would give us the best stock market returns? Well, that would be in the one year post-election, and that would be if we had an incumbent win, which would be 14.2% return, and a Democratic win, which would be an 11.65% return. Obviously, in this case, we can't have that. If it's incumbent, it's going to be Republican. It's going to be Trump. I think the general vibe takeaway for me, though, is this. Yahoo Finance also can't help but point out that every number in this table is positive. Sure, some of the numbers are only barely positive, but it's yet another reminder that stocks usually go up. So the prediction from Yahoo, from Wall Street, from these big banks is, like we said earlier, the experts see two scenarios for this presidential election. Stocks will go up or present themselves a buying opportunity. I mean, the history is pretty clear. Food for thought. Give me your opinion down below in the comments. And like I pointed out at the beginning of today's video, looking at Bitcoin's price, so not for the last seven days, for the last 30 days, the last month, Bitcoin is trending up. Looking at the S&P, not for the last five days, last month, Bitcoin, is, I mean, the S&P is, I don't know, sort of slumping down six months. Okay, the S&P yeah, has been slumping down. But why is Bitcoin showing such strength? Well, during global, political, any sort of uncertainty, economic or not, Bitcoin and gold also tend to do well. Food for thought. Okay, that is the video. 
My name's Austin. See you tomorrow.